I think the biggest lesson I learned over the course of my years is like, everything is a numbers game, right? No matter what you're doing, whether you're shooting shots, you're knocking doors, you're opening businesses, you're trading, whatever it is, it's all a numbers game. If you could do something X amount of time and figure out how many times it take you in order to win, then that's the formula, you have it right there. Welcome back to another episode of Beyond the Wealth. Today, we have Mo Hayek, the first repeat guests we've had on the show. Mo has done some pretty cool things since we last interviewed him, so I'm really excited for you guys to get to hear it. Mo, how we doing, brother? Doing great, bro, how are you? Good, man. We haven't, I don't think we've seen each other since that last episode. Yeah, we haven't, it's been uh, quite a while. So it's good to have an on-camera reunion here. <laughs> so, I mean, some people might have tuned in, but the show's definitely grown since our first interview. Tell the people a quick 30-second pitch on who you are. Um, yeah, my name is Mo, and pretty much I built brand online. Started off with door-to-door -door sales on the social media marketing thing, got into crypto, and then kind of found my calling with uh, just specifically marketing and building brands online. For sure. So uh, I know you've been on the show, but I like to kind of go in chronological order. Some people have seen your origination, and it was the door-to-door -door sales. Mm -hmm. What was it like in your early stages? And I know in the first episode, we, we went way back to like high school yeah. life, but let's start at the door-to-door -door sales. What got you into that and what was that experience like? I mean, honestly, what got me into it was I, I knew I didn't want to do a nine to five and I knew I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. So my only option was to find something that was hard enough that not a lot of people do, but had a lot of upside. And door-to-door -door sales seemed like the perfect vehicle for me to say, okay, it's not a cash register job. It's not a McDonald's job. It's not a, you know, Wendy's drive through guy type of job. So I knew door-to-door -door was going to be hard. I knew when something is hard, it was going to teach me something. So I'm like, let me go all in on that and test it out. And how old were you during that time? Uh, I think I was probably like 17. And I know there's mixed mixed reviews on door-to-door -door sales but yeah. would you say looking back it was it was really powerful to get you to where you are now door-to-door -door sales is probably one of the most powerful jobs you can do as a stepping stone into entrepreneurship i would not want to do that for years i would i would never do that now but as a kid essentially or as dad i would 100 percent force my kids to do door-to-door -door sales just because it teaches you so many necessary skills that it's very hard to learn online or anywhere else yeah, I know like one of the big things when I talk to some people that were in it, handling rejection, because you're just going yeah. door to door, uh -huh. getting no's nonstop. Some people go weeks without a yes. Yep. And I think that really builds resilience because I've you're not the first door to door salesperson I've had a conversation with and they all have been extremely successful yep. and they all can go back and say, hey, a lot of the shit that I learned during that door to door time was very applicable to the life that I've built now. Yep. So you, you're doing door to door. I'm guessing you're starting to feel like it's not enough. You want like the next thing. What was that next thing in your journey? Next thing was e-commerce. It was Ty Lopez. It was Grand Cardone online. It's like, how do I figure out how to s maximize my time, right? Because we all know we have 10 hours, 12 hours in the day that you can actually work. I didn't want to spend all 12 hours making a limited amount of money and a limited mm -hmm. amount of actions every single day. So the natural calling was like, okay, the next thing that you can have massive leverage with was online. So I had to figure out why I can do online to make money. Instead of door -door. Yeah, I got to get this guy Ty Lopez on. It's like every <laughs> guest that I talk to is like Ty Lopez was the guy that really inspired me. And yeah. it's funny because like I just didn't have any of this background before starting to interview people. So yeah. like every time I talk to people, it's like, oh, this person inspired me and I got to go back and I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't see that guy's ads back in the day. I just wasn't in the space. So it wasn't relevant. Hundred percent. I know your first kind of big e-commerce win was that plant company. Yep. And it was a shit show. <laughs> Talk to people about why it was a shit show, but also why it was such a big win. Yeah, I mean, Modern Garden was one of the biggest brands that I built before what I'm doing now. Um, the main reason why that business was good was because I started it in the time where I rode the biggest trends during COVID. So selling plants online was like unheard of. And that year it just had absolutely blew up. But why it was a shit show, it was just a really difficult product in general because it was a perishable product that essentially had a shelf life mm -hmm. on the way to us, on the way to our customer, and even on the way, you know, just in our warehouse in general. So 
it was a pretty tough business. But yeah, I talk about that. I think on a lot of podcasts already. So, so yeah, what, what's another? What's another ecom? Uh, you know what? Everybody always talks about the big wins. Like, what was an yeah. ecom brand that you thought was going to be a huge win that wasn't? Silkware, actually. So right before I launched Modern Garden, I had tried to launch a silkware brand, which is essentially silk pillow sheets, silk sets, etc., for your hair. Especially in the woman niche. The reason why I did that was because I seen this brand called Blissy, mm -hmm. I believe at the time, and they had like Kim Kardashian, they had like all the big celebrities on it. So I was like, oh, I think I could crush this as well. Um, I invested in a photo shoot. I got models, did content, and they just absolutely fumbled. Like it was literally just, <laughs> it was the worst experience ever. And from there, I had to find a quick rebound, and that's where the plants came in. So that was pre-plants. That was right before plants. Okay. Yeah, right before. So what was it like? I mean, you, you take that big loss there early on. Yeah. What do you think gave you the confidence to say, you know what? I, I'm going to just roll over into this next opportunity. Because yeah. most people probably would have just folded and failed right there. I think the biggest lesson I learned over the course of my years is like, everything is a numbers game, right? No matter what you're doing, whether you're shooting shots, you're knocking doors, you're opening businesses or trading, whatever it is, it's all a numbers game. If you could do something X amount of time and figure out how many times it take you in order to win, then that's the formula. You have it right there. So for me, it's like, okay, I launched one brand, two brand, three brands. I knew eventually one of these brands were going to hit. So I had to just keep trying and keep trying, keep learning, and eventually something's going to hit. And that's exactly what happened. So I know you have that big brand now, which we're going to talk about, yeah. but how many e-commerce brands have you launched during your Too time? Many to count. <laughs> Too many to count. Yeah, I've launched brands, drop shipping stores, you name it. Hey, like, and for the, through the ringer. And for the e-commerce people watching right now, what was the biggest, I know you just said the uh, takeaway was like, just you got to have the amount of times because the yeah. success will come, but there's probably somebody listening here that's on brand 10 and has had no success. Yeah. What would be your message to that person? Keep going. Just keep Literally, going. Just keep, I mean, it's like so cliche, right? Because we all sit in front of a computer and we try to watch like motivational stuff. Like, you know, whether it's Jeff Bezos or whoever, Alex, or, like they all preach the same exact message, which is like, you have to pay your dues. And mm -hmm. the only way you pay your dues is by putting in long hours, long days, and a lot of fucking tries in order, in order for you to win. And if you can't do that, then you're just not built for it. Yeah, no, and, and it's funny because I feel like a lot of the, the real advice is cliche because yeah. it's, just, it's just facts. Like mm -hmm. some people want to make it sound sexy and cool, but sometimes it's just the plain cold facts. Like you just need to keep going. And I think that's what separates a successful entrepreneur and somebody who doesn't make it to be successful. It's the resilience to like, you know what? I've gotten punched in the face 15 times but 16, you know, 16 might be that one. I think it's the same with social media. It's yeah. like you post 30 reels and it's like, fuck, I'm getting 200 views a reel. But it's that inside of you like, dude, this next one might be it. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at it is like anything in business is 10% industry secrets, 90% effort, mm -hmm. right? So I love that. If you can just do effort every single day to continue getting better or continue trying, all you have to learn is the few industry secrets or hacks in order for you to blow up. So, and you can't really learn that and not put in the effort. Cause yeah. you, I can, know, I can know all the knowledge I can, I want right now about, I don't know, building rockets, but if I've never built a rocket, it's still going to be hard as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that quote, actually 10% industry secrets, 90% effort mm -hmm. because everybody like we have, so much content coming at us as, yeah. as people that it feels almost like you get analysis by paralysis. Like just keep watching the videos. Like I'm going to launch one day, like one day I'm going to launch, but usually the videos aren't going to be the reason why you succeed. They might be the reason why you succeed down the road as you get into it. But most people don't even start because they're too obsessed with the, the early stages of learning and learning and learning and learning. And that's been to me the biggest reason, like even I've failed in some things. I'm watching videos and I'm locked in and then I go yeah. to do it and I don't have the, the drive because it's not something I'm passionate about. It's a money grab or it's whatever's hot. And then you just kind of fall off. Yeah. So wh what do you think about like when people say you should only go into industries that you're passionate about? Um, I disagree. I definitely disagree. Like, for example, a lot of people aren't passionate about crypto, mm -hmm. but they make a lot of money there. Right. 
sure some of it is luck some yeah. of it is the industry but i mean ultimately i think your your passion has to fall into something bigger than the industry because you're never working for the industry you're working for your passion mm -hmm. so whether your passion is to travel the world it's to help your family it's to build a family whatever it is that's your ultimate passion you just need to find a vehicle that'll help you serve to get you to that passion so yeah that's the answer to your question dude that's a great answer like yeah. uh, i love that you're always working for your passion correct then and that i mean i think that's spot on what i mean you're you're in e-commerce you have some hiccups but you have that successful brand regardless of it being a little bit of a shit show what makes you pivot into crypto like is it the fact that it's popular and we're living in miami like what was it um i think that might have played a big role like it's it's hard to be in miami and not be in crypto yeah oh, funny enough to say that but yeah again i had like i i finished off that brand and i'm like what do i do now right I'm hearing about people making money left and right crypto. And I'm like, these people are not smarter than me, right? They're not better than me. So I can definitely figure this thing out myself. And that's literally what it was like. I just put everything on the side, focusing on a crypto for 36 months. And you know, that bull market, I came out with more money than I ever have in my life. Shit. You, you and a lot of people in Miami really yeah. killed it during that time. And I'm one of those few people that didn't kill it during that time. I'm that idiot that was like you know what no way this is too skeptical and then i'm like you know what i am gonna try it right here at 45 at the to 60 top. range classic i feel like that's just the way it always goes for yeah. me but it i feel like it was a pivot for you like e-commerce you're behind the computer nobody's seeing you then you start building these brands in crypto you're writing a newsletter you're doing a podcast you're making videos on youtube what was it like transitioning from behind the camera to like now building content around you, Mo? Yeah, I think one of the biggest lessons I've learned when it comes to personal branding is if you haven't done it, you can't teach it, right? So for example, like my Twitter blew up from like literally like no followers to like now 12,000 followers in three months mm -hmm. because everything I talked about is exactly what I'm living through and what I'm doing. Yeah. It's not what I see somebody else talking about it and I wanna talk about it too, right? And, and people online can feel that. And second second of all, it just comes off way more organic, real, and transparent when you do that. Like, I think one of the biggest things I've learned early on is like, maybe when I was younger and I was doing YouTube, I would just like look for a really good video that was made by somebody else. And I'm like, oh, let me just remake this video, right? Now I'm just, I'm consuming a lot of content for sure, but I'm also looking at it from a different perspective. It's like, okay, if this guy's talking about three reasons why X, Y, and Z. I'm going to talk about three reasons why you can't do X, Y, and Z mm -hmm. from my own lens. Yeah. Right. So the biggest lesson is like, don't try to teach something you don't really know and you don't really do. So that that's been the biggest lessons. And ever since I kind of started talking about what I actually do every single fucking day, people started resonating with it. Yeah. And, and I mean, we've been connected for, I don't know, probably like two years now. Yeah. I saw, I've been following you on Twitter because yeah. I was interested in the crypto stuff. Yeah. And I've seen you now over the last three months, like you said, really your, your, your Twitter X, whatever we want to call it, has taken off significantly. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because exactly what you're saying. Like I can follow you on X and keep up to date with your brands, yeah. what you're building, how you're building it, what challenges you're dealing with. And I think that's the content people want to consume. Yeah. People are getting tired of the talking head of like, here are five lessons you need to know about this. No, dude, show me how you're making millions of dollars yeah. like in the trenches, like in 100%, real life. 100%. What type of connections did jumping into that crypto space bring you? Good, uh, bad? Uh, definitely good for sure. I mean, it's always good to network. I think you just got to do it when it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people think networking is the ultimate key to success when yeah. in reality, you can only network with people around your level mm -hmm. of, industry expertise i would say so yeah i mean it's definitely got me with a lot of great people for sure. yeah i think on the networking topic i think people forget that you need to bring something to the table exactly. in networking like everybody's like oh well shit like there's a really cool guy like let me go connect with him he's for sure gonna want to talk to me yeah i mean why would he give you anything if you've got nothing to give back and exactly. i think people just think it's like handout city out here and like I'm in corporate America in sales and yeah. like networking is a huge part of the job, but 
dude, nobody gives a shit about you. Like if you can't actually help them, it's gotta be a give and a take and people forget that. And I feel like in Miami, especially, it's like if I go to Sugar and just hang out up there on the rooftop, like I'm gonna meet really cool people. Yeah. All right, but like, what are you gonna offer those cool people? I mean, just think about it this way, right? If you're somebody who let's say is a millionaire and somebody random comes up to you and wants advice or wants to network with you, what would your reaction be? I mean, I wouldn't probably not. Yeah, so why would you much. expect, as is like, let's say somebody who's broke, you know, that's really not doing much for their life to go ahead and expect to meet somebody who's gonna change your life? Nobody's gonna do it for you. Yeah. You gotta do it yourself. I mean, shit, in Miami, you gotta walk around and keep your head on a swivel because someone with a mic might run up in your face and try and interview on the side of Brickle. Yeah. That, that trend is crazy. Mm-hmm. So, e com, crypto. Now we're back into the e-com world. Yeah. You've launched a extremely successful product. I've seen everybody talking about it. I've seen it because I just follow you and keep up with your content. Explain what that product is and talk about how it came to light. Yeah, the product is NZT 48, which is pretty much the Limitless Pillow from the Limitless movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I ran into my partner at Limitless on Instagram, actually funny enough, now my partner. Um, Right after the crypto bull market, literally, I had made a lot of money. I chartered his jet, and on his jet, I met him, and he's like, hey, I have some products. I think there's opportunity for us to work together, and six months after, I'm like, this is a no fucking brainer, right? He's some, he was at a place where it's like I wanted to be, like the guy owns a jet, mm-hmm. does this, very successful in business, et cetera. So partnered up with him. We launched a product in July last year, and I just kind of put my brains behind it, and doing that, we were able to absolutely explode. We talked about the product a little bit prior and it has ingredients that are, yeah. are, are like interesting and cool. Did you have any knowledge in that space? Is that what your partner brought to the table? You brought the marketing and e-com background? No, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i really good at e-com and marketing. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I really do. So yeah, I didn't know about the product. I learned about the product. It didn't really take me long, a week. Yeah. week worth of uh, research and um, yeah we were just kind of able to take it to market and kind of go from there what was it like because you didn't know this partner prior to chartering that no, jet right no <laughs> what was it like engaging in a partnership for a business with somebody that you didn't know prior to this encounter because I know there's a lot of people who are like don't want to partner with people because they're scared they've heard those yeah. horror stories of oh my partner did me dirty what was it like from your perspective when it came to getting in touch and, and like locking in a deal with this partner? I mean, it, the partnership didn't happen like instantly, right? Yeah. Like in six months, we're like, hey, let's work together first. Let's feel each other out. Like, how can I help you, right? Because ultimately, you still have to prove yourself and they have to prove yourself, themselves to you. So it didn't happen overnight. But obviously, after working together for a year, you know, you establish your authority, you understand what the person's strengths are. And you're like, okay, now it makes sense for us to be partners. Got it. So we're, we're, you're building this limitless pill. Um, at what was that like, oh shit moment? Like we have something huge here. Oh shit moment. Um, so when we first launched, right? And this is kind of the strategy that I used to launch any e-commerce brand. Yeah, give people the yeah, nitty gritty. It's the strategy is simple, right? You find a product, you want to go ahead and create as much leverage as possible for that product using short form content. Because short form content is the number one tool you can use right now to blow anything up. So what do we do? We hire three creators. I pay a few hundred bucks to each creator to post some videos. And within 30 days and video number, I don't know, 90 probably, like literally. Because we have three creators posting one video a day. Literally, video 90 blew up and had like 4 million views. Those 4 million views generated like $60,000. And we're like, okay, there's demand here. Now let's take it a level up. And a level up is not three creators, 30 creators. Three creators, just like, yeah, adding more creators, building up the brand, obviously improving the packaging, the website, all of that above. So, you know, the, my strategy before used to be like, hey, let me try to perfect the business before I even get started, mm-hmm. right? And that was a big lesson that I had to get over. Now it's always, hey, how can I go ahead and launch the minimal viable product mm-hmm. and then continue to improve it? Because if I can't look back on day one of my business and my product, and say, damn, that shit sucked. And I, obviously, I'm not really doing better every single day, right? Yeah. So that's probably been one of the biggest lessons. And, you know, if you take a look at it, like six months ago, packaging, the product, the brand all looked like shit. 
and now it's 10 times better and it's converting 10 times more. Yeah, that was a minimal viable product. That's something that I learned recently. And I was always under the impression like, man, spend three, four months making this the perfect product, beautiful, great. But then you go through and spend the money and launch it and there's not that much of a market. Yeah. Build the minimal viable product, see if there's traction, and then when it breaks, just keep going and fixing it. So yeah. I think that's, that's great advice. What are your thoughts on, because e-commerce traditionally was built off of Facebook ads, yeah. ads. What is your opinion in this new uh, UGC versus paid ads? I mean, you need both, right? Like no brand can live off of only spending money and making money. Like you can't just, you can't grow a real business off just paid advertising. So you need to have organic presence. And the only way you do organic presence in times like now is using what all these trillion dollar, billion dollar companies are giving you, which is ultimate organic reach for a really good short form content. So we were, we were talking about short form and I, th I feel as if there's a little bit of short form fatigue, the quick 30 seconds, multiple transitions. And I started to feel that. And then I saw TikTok really pushing 10 minute videos. Now they're pushing videos like this, a YouTube video posted on TikTok. Do you think there's ever going to, there will be a time in the near future where short form just isn't kind of driving the, the, the value that it was or short form is going to continue to be king? Short form is going to continue to be king. If there's fatigue, there's fatigue in the quality or quantity of your content, not the actual product. It's yeah. like you buy a Lambo and you're like, yeah, this Lambo sucks. Well, yeah, this one Lambo sucks, but obviously the company produces a really good fucking car. Is that's why a lot of other people are buying it. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I think it's interesting because I actually, and I, I don't want to make it seem like I think short form will be dead. I just think right now it's so popular but I think the people that push through and like as people start to fall off, as these fake brands, fake creators continue to like fall off, then we'll see again like this just like absolute rush of people f watching the quality content. Yeah. And everybody, it used to be optimized for quantity. Post two, three reels a day, post two, three TikToks a day. One goes viral, you're good. I see a lot more people optimizing for quality now, not posting tons of videos every other day. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's like, okay, I don't know if you know this stat, but I think it's like 90% of the users on Instagram consume from 10% of the users, mm -hmm. right? Or I think it's yeah. even like worse than that. That's, that means that's that, crazy. That means that the amount of people actually creating content is so small compared to the amount that's of people that's actually consuming the content, mm -hmm. right? So knowing that, and if you take a look at like that 10%, let's say 90% of them are all doing the same stupid short form type of content sitting in front of a camera, no creativity, then you already know all you have to do to stand out is be a little bit different, yep. right? Different, organic, and real. And if you can do that, then short form content is going to be your ultimate level. That's Dude. the best way to create leverage. Yeah, and it's funny. I had an argument with a friend recently where they were like, being an influencer, posting content online, personal branding is saturated. Yeah. And I said, I think you're so wrong. And mm -hmm. he was like, why? And I was like, we've lived in Miami our whole life. One of the hot spots, one of the most popular places. I don't know one person from my high school, people I met in college, people I've met along like just that have lived here in Miami. I don't know one that's a social media influencer. Yeah. So like we have this perception of online we're only seeing the t the ten yeah, percent. Like go people. to Ohio, bro. Go to fucking Colorado. You're not finding nobody yeah. cre creating content. Yeah, and I'm like, if if I don't have if we don't have people in our immediate network, we've met hundreds, maybe thousands of people in our life living here. Yeah. We don't know any content creators or social media like influencers. That means there's just not that many. We're just seeing them because we're so attached to the phone data Correct. that you're just like a little bit brainwashed that you yeah. think everybody's doing this now. Mm -hmm. And like, I have that argument about the podcast that are like, oh, the podcast space is so saturated. And I was like, I, I just don't think so. Like you see it online. So you feel that way. And granted, I think the shitty podcast space is saturated. People who don't do their homework, don't show up and things like that. But I think that we're a little brainwashed because of we we're, we're taking what we're seeing on the phone by Bible. Yeah. hundred percent. I think the biggest thing is no matter what you're doing, it has to all stem from a personal brand. Mm -hmm. And this is like the hard lesson that I kind of had to like give myself 
Because in reality, like I know all the millionaires, I know all these YouTubers that people are watching every single day, but I just never wanted to be one of them in the front end. Yeah. But then I came to realize that they're not really doing it for, let's say, the content and the views. It's more so doing it because you know there is real brand equity as you grow as a person and as anybody can search you up online. Like for me, we, for example, before I tried to start a podcast and it was tough, I was pretty good at it. I mean, I grew it to like 10,000 subscribers. We did mm -hmm. close to a few million, obviously, impressions. But then I understood, I'm like, okay, if I can do my personal brand and then whatever I decide to do later is going to just win because of that personal brand, then that makes ultimate sense. Yeah, right? for sure. I think, yeah, I, I think people underestimate the personal branding a lot. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, that's so cheesy. But let that person show you their balance sheet and how much money's coming in from the videos they're making and that the traffic it's driving towards their website. I bet everybody's a personal brand enthusiast and loves it. Like, who doesn't like organic traffic that you can drive to your site? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the biggest thing about personal branding as well is just think about it this way. There's this video going around of this like guy at a random Miami party, right? Mm -hmm. Where he pulls up his phone and he shows like so many people live on his shit. Yeah. And look how different his life changed. Right? Oh, the he, fake guy, the, right? The guy showed a fake live stream of like 20,000 people Genius. online. What happened? He went to the club, invite him to the DJ section. He went to the pool, girls all want to be with him, right? He went to dinner, yeah, no problem, here you go. Best table in the house. Why? Because people understand that he has some type of authority and leverage online. And they want that, yeah. right? So if you can't build your personal brand... Or if you're not building your personal brand, then you're doing the biggest mistake of your life because that's what matters most. That's like the new type of resume. Yeah, it, and that guy's a genius, by the way. I love yeah, that guy's content. It's like hilarious. People, it is a little sad how superficial people are because sure. he gets people right that's there in reality. plain sight, but that's, that's, that's reality. reality. Yeah. And I mean, we live in potentially one of the most superficial places in the world. 100%. So you're building your personal brand. You've got this successful online brand you're building let's talk about the fun stuff like what fun stuff are you able to do that you weren't able to do before has this leveled you up into this because everybody's always like oh well i want to make a million a year and then i'll be satisfied well yeah. then i meet people that make 10 million i want 10 million like where are you at in that perspective obviously no dollars and cents but like has your life changed a little bit here not at all to be honest it's it's been the same i still enjoy the simple things the boats the, the beach days the good dinners you can't judge your life and yourself based off the amount of money you have because that's the least important thing, right? What's most important is how you feel about yourself, whether you have a lot of money or you don't have a lot of money, right? Like if I go hang out with somebody who owns a hundred million dollars, whatever it is, I'm not judging myself compared to him. Like, Oh, his life is so good. Cause he owes up. He has a hundred million dollar jet and I don't. Right. It's just like, Hey, he has problems just like I do. He lives a life just like I do. And no matter how much money you get, you can still live however you want, essentially. Yeah. So, yeah, my life hasn't changed. I still enjoy the same things. Sure, the quality of them gets a little bit better, but it's the same exact activity. I still hit the same gyms. I go to the same beaches, travel the same planes. It's all the same. Yeah, I see. I've seen you been in the gym recently, like, a lot more. And, and with some of the people that I've had the chance to interview, how important is health to you at the moment and had – have you always been this serious about health and grinding or is this something kind of new you're working on? Yeah, I mean, honestly, health has always been like important to me. I think uh, growing up though, like, you know, having high metabolism and a fuck ton of testosterone, you know, like- <laughs> uh, Feel yeah, invincible. I feel invincible. But yeah, as you get a little bit older, it's it's more important to kind of keep an eye on it. And, you know, I, I think I heard this quote from somebody who was like, you can't buy a Lambo looking like a Corolla. <laughs> so- <laughs> Ultimately, for me, I just want to be in the best physical shape possible because that's ultimately just going to rewire my brain and allow me to be 10 times better in performance. Yeah, and do you feel like you're thinking with more clarity? Do you 100%. feel like you're... 100%, yeah. Working out every single day, like doing what I got to get done just allows me to continue to push myself to be better. Yeah, it's... I always like... I keep interviewing these people here in Miami, people that have been successful, and I always try and find the common themes. Like, what yeah. is that like one thing everybody's doing everybody that shows up to my house or, or i show up to interview them they're in great shape and they feel amazing they they look amazing and i'm, I'm i would say that I, that's something that i need to start prioritizing in my life because mm -hmm. i'm in the same boat athlete my whole life great metabolism ton of testosterone well 
shit, now I'm 25, haven't played a sport in five years. And I'm like, it's, I'm starting to get to that point where it's just not there anymore. Yeah. Like I'm not losing weight in a week like I used to. So it's, it's interesting to see like how everybody, especially, I mean, I, again, we live in this fake little world here in Miami where like everybody's super fit. Like I had Champ on the show and he was like, Brickle is like this like fake little dome of like fit people on the move, active. How much does this environment do you think plays into your success and like you as an individual? Or do you think that's just- Yeah, I mean, environment is everything, right? Because ultimately if you're hanging around, like I grew up in Boston, right? Now when I go to Boston, it feels like a depressing, cold, old town, right? You stand out of light for too long, people are like, fuck you, get fucking going, let's go, right? Yeah. It doesn't happen here, why? Because the environment doesn't, help. there's just more abundance in the environment. Yep. Right, so you can't go and live in a place where there's scarcity, there's fear, right? There's a lot of poorness. Like here, sure, you'll see homeless people, but ultimately everything you see is what? Abundance, yep. wealth, money, happiness, sun, water, right? So when you see all those things, those are all elements of success. And ultimately that plays a huge role into the way you feel, right? The way you perform, the way you want to live life. So yeah, if I was in Miami, I probably wouldn't have accelerated in life the same way I did living here. Yeah. I mean, I'm blessed to have grown up here my whole life. So like, it's funny, like until I got old enough to meet people outside of like my home, I was like, I was ignorant to the fact that like I've grown up seeing Lambos and Rolls Royces and my neighbors have huge two story houses on the open bay. Mm -hmm. And like, I now I do a new thing where I, I leave my house just in the middle of the day when I have a break from work, I'll just leave my phone and just go walk around my neighborhood mm -hmm. just quietly. And I see the same houses my whole life, but still walk by them and just look at them and just think like, fuck, like I want that. Like, how am I going to go get that? Yeah. And Again, back to somebody in Ohio or Wisconsin, you got to be extra motivated to push for some of these things because it's hard if you don't see it. Like right. online, it's not the same. But when I walk up to a house and I see two story, two lot house on the open bay, Ferrari, two Rolls Royces, it's just like, shit, dude, the, the money is endless around here. Like, how do I go get my piece of that pie? Yep. What do you think about this? Because I thought it was cool. I, I recently interviewed Renee Lacade and we talked about money being almost endless. And we broke it down from like that camera right there. Somebody paid to buy the parts. Somebody made the parts and sold them to somebody. Somebody made the camera, sold it to the major brand. The major brand sold the camera to the US. My video guy who was not here today bought the camera and now he's making money off that camera. And then I'm using the camera now to interview us. And then we'll make money off that. What do you think about money being infinite? You just got to go get a piece of your pie. It is. There's living money all, all around us. Everywhere. Money is the easiest thing to attain. Money is the easiest thing to attain. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who just heard that and say, well, what, what is that supposed to mean? Like, I, I'm, I'm broke and I can't find the money. Look, bro. <laughs> I mean, money is so easy because you can just literally you can go deliver domino's pizza and you can make money right what people value is your thought process i guess or your skill set in a specific industry like again i work with people who make hundreds of millions of dollars right what they do is the same exact things that i do they're just a little bit better and they value themselves a little bit more right so what's the difference between again this camera and one we can order on team right now right yeah the logo, the brand, essentially, right? The expertise, the experience behind it. So all you got to do is find one fucking skill set, right? Go all in on it until you feel like you're an expert where you stand out and people will come throw their money at you, mm -hmm. right? Whenever you have to go and essentially ask people for money, that's when your income level is going to be very low. But whenever you get really good at something where people are coming to you, that's when you can charge whatever, whatever fucking price you want. Yeah, and I, I think back at our first interview, yeah. we talked about you've had, you, you have very successful people around you and so many of your friends and even yourself, you admitted, get that shiny object syndrome where I got to go like get in this field. I got to go do this. But you said the friends that stuck to one thing, doubled down and perfected it yeah. are the ones that got the richest. 100%. And that's kind of what you just highlighted right there. Yeah. So like, and it's funny, I always... 
I always do the interviews like talking to the potential one person that's watching this like, fuck, I'm broke. <laughs> I want to make money. Like I can't make money. And it's a common theme. Double down on a skill that you can then leverage to get you into these rooms, yep. be successful. Because it's true. If you're the best at this one thing, people will literally throw it's money important. at you. Yeah. I've talked to some people about being very present in the environment and like um, manifesting, I hate using the buzzwords, but like almost manifesting like success. What do you think about the concept of like the people that are head down, like not paying attention, don't have their eyes open and are struggling trying to figure it out versus the person that's very open those people don't miss the opportunities because opportunities fly right by us every day. Mm -hmm. But most people don't even notice because they're not even open-minded enough to think that those opportunities are coming. What do you think about that concept of like, if you're looking and, and believing that these opportunities will come, they actually do start coming and you don't miss them. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. If you're not thinking about something, then the chances of it happening is very low, right? As simple as that. So the more you think about something, the better you're up. It's like the, what's it called? The, the red car theory, uh -huh. right? Yeah. If you never think about a red car, right? The chances of you sitting in the middle of the day and you're like, oh, that's a red car is very low. But now that I mentioned a red car, I guarantee you by the time you go back to your house, you're going to see 30 red cars. Yep. Why? Because now you're thinking about it. So that's just the way, I guess, humans work. So yeah, the more you want to think about something, the better. Yeah, it's, it, it's funny. Like, I don't think people comprehend how strong your mind is mm -hmm. and like working on your mind and getting it to be kind of locked in to to notice some of these things and i mean correct me if i'm wrong that's a little bit of what this new product that you've launched helps with right mm -hmm. mental clarity yeah. mental focus yeah i didn't even think about wrapping it all the way back in there but that's kind of what that product does right yeah 100 percent. yeah i mean we we're in the new tropic space so Nootropics are pretty much, think about them as proteins for your brain, mm -hmm. right? The way they work is by, essentially they help you produce better blood flow or at least push more blood flow to your brain so you can use your brain as a muscle instead of just a thing sitting inside your head. That, 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 that's awesome. So you have this successful brand now. What's next for you? What's next for Mo? Are you just head down in the trenches on this one company? expanding the SKUs that you're pushing out or is there something next that you're building up towards? Yeah, I mean, the brand that we're pushing right now is probably gonna be one of the biggest brands this year that you'll probably see on the internet. We're gonna expand the hell out of it. And um, yeah, the focus to continue just doubling down on what we're doing right now, grow the team, grow the inventory, uh, not the inventory, grow the product line and um, yeah, let it rip. Yeah, I gotta get my hands on this product and then give it a try. I keep interviewing all of these cool guests like that have these individual products. And I'm like, dude, this makes my job more fun. <laughs> I get to like try all these things and, and then know the people like we we're talking about my interview earlier this week with Daniel, the rap TV guy. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I was that sixth, seventh grader bumping Lil Wayne gonorrhea on the way to, to school. as like a yeah. little kid. I was a consumer of rap TV my whole life. And then I got to meet the person that built it. And I'm like, this is a cool part of this job. But like, same with this. I mean, I might, I might try that product and, and be a consumer for the next 30 years. You should, bro. And it's badass that like, I get to sit down and, and, and talk to the people that create these brands. Yeah. So we're doubling down on, 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 on this nootropic brand. It's, it's gonna blow up. I, I've already seen it like blowing up all over the place. What are you going to do as this brand like takes off? Is the goal to exit? Is the goal to, to keep it and, and blow it up? I'm just curious because I know some people, it's like, oh, well, I want the $100 million exit. Like, that's what I'm building for. Mm -hmm. Some people just want to build a company up from the ground up, own it, and run with it. Is, is an exit something you're interested in? Right? IPO. 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 Okay. So sure for it. Yeah. Shit. All right. I'll be a shareholder. <laughs> I'll, I'll buy some shares when it goes live. Well, dude, I mean, this has been great, and it's it's always fun to catch up, especially with the camera. And, and I like interviews like this where we've just been shooting the shit for 30, 40, 50 minutes, however long it is. I never actually know. Um, anything you want to leave for the viewers? I know that you, you do some type of, you, you do help some brands that are launching on e-com. Like anything you want to tell the people listening? 
Um, or watching. No, I mean, if they've made it this far, just know the biggest advice you can get in life is to just keep fucking working. And ultimately, your time will come. So don't get, you know, bamboozled by all these online gurus. Don't try to follow the big next fad. Whatever you're doing, if you enjoy it, do it. Figure out how you can be the best at it and then charge a fuck ton of money for it. Mm -hmm. Or find something that a lot of people suck at and be like, hey, I can be the best in this industry. And if you do that and you do that for a very long time, you become the expert. And as an expert, you get paid the top dollars. Mic drop. Where can people follow you? All of it will be linked in the description, but I have to cater to the lazy people who won't even click the description. Uh, it's the Mo Hayek on Twitter, Mo Hayek on Instagram, and just Google it. You'll find it. For sure, brother. <laughs> Bro, Thank you so much. Great.